In today's session, we're gonna talk more about cold therapy and talk about the different options that you have access to, starting out with a cold shower, getting into a cold plunge, a cold ocean, river, or lake, and finally finishing off with an ice bath. Now, why might you want to consider deliberate cold exposure? What are the benefits? Well, let's go back to just the cold showers. There are clinical studies finding that people who take cold showers compared to people who do not suffer from less cold and sick days. This was an occupational study. We can throw it up on the screen here, published in Plus One Medicine, an ongoing study during the cold and flu season, finding that just a 30 second cold shower actually significantly reduces the days that people are sick in an occupational setting compared to people who do not get cold. So there are benefits to just a cold shower. However, if you live in the South, if you live in the Midwest or in the summertime where the groundwater temperature isn't quite cold, this is where you might need to consider a different form of intervention. Now people say, how long should I start with a cold shower? Let's just say you have cold groundwater. I think a good 30, to 45 seconds is sufficient. Now, the importance of being cold on purpose to activate brown adipose tissue, to improve the immune resilience that is associated with getting cold, there are several different studies have found improvements in phagocytic capacity of various immune cells, activation of brown adipose tissue. I think consistency is more important than total duration, meaning that if you do this every day, every other day, it's more important than doing one five minute ice bath every single week. Just like with exercise. If you just exercise once a week, you're probably not gonna make progress. If you start to exercise three to four days per week, you will notice more progress. So consistency, in my opinion, is more important than total duration. Now, before we get into all these different other forms, I will put in the description below some resources that I personally use. We have the Ice Barrel as well as the Morozco Forge. I put that in the ice bath because what's, what makes that cold immersion tank, deliberate cold immersion tank, really useful is it actually makes ice. It's one of the only products on the market that make ice. You can save using the code HIH350, $350 off. The Ice Barrel is another great product. We'll talk about that in a moment. But I wanna talk about circulation. Here's why you should really consider cold therapy and deliberate cold exposure. Uh, observational studies in free divers, observational studies of the Japanese AMA divers. These, are, uh, these women actually dive into the ocean year round. They've been doing this since the 1960s, probably before that, diving for pearls and other you know, artifacts in the ocean. They're free diving. When those individuals are looked at their skin temperature and their blood flow, when they go into the water, it's observed that they have a 300% increase in circulation in their extremities. So there's this phenomenon known as cold-induced vasodilation. So the more acclimated you get, and that's why I'm saying be consistent with your cold showers, your cold swims, your ice baths, because the more acclimated you get, your body shifts from this muscle-induced thermogenesis to metabolically-induced thermogenesis, this hypermetabolism that acutely increases and that causes vasodilation, the activation of brown fat, the improvement in metabolic responses. So that's really important, I think, one of the main benefits because it's been shown that diabetics, people with insulin resistance, we now know that some 94% of American adults are, have some degree of metabolic dysfunction or insulin resistance. So if you can improve your cardiovascular health, that will help with erectile function, that will help with exercise performance, and your cardiovascular system. Because as you get more acclimated, your body helps to maintain core body temperature by causing vasodilation. Now, as you first start on this, maybe you have very nods, maybe you're sensitive to cold, you're gonna notice vasoconstriction. You're gonna notice your cold hands and feet. But again, as you get acclimated by starting with cold showers and progressively improving to something like an ice barrel is another great option. Now, you should get an add-on cooler for these different options that are emerging uh, that you can add on to the ice barrel. I'll put links below there. Now, why did I put ocean, river, lake, stream ahead of an a deliberate tank like, like a, a cold immersion tank, like a cold plunge. Well, because this is generally gonna be colder and you're moving around. There's something to be said about cold water swimming, swimming in the ocean, swimming in a cold river lake. You know, you're moving and you're not allowing that thermal layer to, to build. And so every with every swim, with every kick, with every move, it's that cold water. It can, keeps hitting your skin and can help to activate this hypermetabolic response and improve brown adipose tissue activation, cause the pivoting of your white fat cells to behave more like brown fat and to become enriched in mitochondria. So that's the benefits there. And of course, what I think is, is the best is either a frozen lake, river, or stream, or the Morozco Forge tank because 
it produces its own ice. This thing is really cold. You can titrate it down to like 34 degrees. So if you do three to five minutes a day in there, you will notice very quick adaptations and improvements in handling in your body's resilience when it comes to becoming more tolerant of cold exposure. So I've noticed that after doing this for several years now, we got this in 2021, I can handle a lot of different extreme temperature conditions out in the outdoors when I'm skiing, when I'm hiking, working around the yard in the winter, not having to wear a jacket, and notice real quick changes in vascularity, improvements in blood flow, and to be honest, this is anecdotal, but improvement in exercise performance. We just had the CEO of Morosco Forge on. We talked a lot about how doing an ice bath or deliberate cold shower before exercise may enhance testosterone after you exercise. So using exercise as a modality to warm up after getting deliberately cold, not using cold exposure after exercise because that can slow down the adaptations from the exercise session. So again, people say, well, which one is best? What's the right temperature? My answer to that is consistency trumps all. If all you have access to is a cold shower, that is a phenomenal place to start. Uh, we can all find a lake, river, stream, or ocean that's reasonably cold, especially during the winter time. Make it a social thing. Get your friends, get your family members. I bring my daughter, we go in the, the cold bath, we go in the cold plunge from Iceboro. We also go in the lake in the winter. It's a lot of fun, my friends. And if you can do contrast, get hot on purpose. This is how the Russians do it. They'll do one round in the sauna, take a break do another round with water on the rocks, then they'll do deliberate cold exposure after their body is sufficiently warm. So that's something that you can do in that resilience that can be improved from the two hermetic extremes. Extreme cold and extreme hot helps improve resilience and improving your autonomic nervous system and the parasympathetic nervous system specifically. I think there's a lot of benefits there. So uh, here's where I would start. Consistency trumps all. Sometimes in the winter, I just do 45 seconds in the morning and that's it. Now in the summertime where it's a little bit easier to warm up, I'll do five minutes. I play one of my favorite songs. I listen in there, I meditate, focus on gratitude, all the things in my life that I'm grateful for, my goals and so forth, and the five minutes go by very quickly. Yes, I have a little bit of you know, shivering induced thermogenesis, but that goes away quite quickly, especially if you start to exercise or go for a walk after that to warm your body up. So it feels amazing. Now let's finish off and talk about Raynaud's. Raynaud's phenomenon is an extreme overreaction to cold. Now scientists have found with cold pressure tests, with cold water immersions, that people who experience Raynaud's phenomenon actually get improvements with deliberate cold exposure. Not every single person, there's different subtypes of Raynaud's, but if you suffer from Raynaud's, you might benefit from being intentional about periodic cold exposure as an intervention or a tool to improve your body's resilience. Part of the physiology like we talked about with the almond divers and free divers is that increase in vasodilation after you get acclimated to the cold. So consider, even if you have Raynaud's, even if you're intolerant to the cold right now, uh, that could be a symptom of low brown adipose tissue activation. Uh, various studies show that people who live in temperature controlled environments year round generally have a higher body fat percentage compared to people who live in colder environments. Look at the obesity prevalence in the US. It's right around the south. It goes right through Alabama, Oklahoma, Tennessee, all that is the highest rates of obesity in the US. Why is that? During the summer, people have air conditioning on. During the winter, they have the heater on. You know, compared to people who live in Minnesota or live in Washington, live in Colorado, where it's extreme heat, extreme cold, you have to be a little bit more resilient. So there is some evidence to suggest that you can awaken this brown adipose tissue by getting cold on purpose. That has a me metabolic benefit, benefit for the thyroid as well as fat loss. So start out with a cold shower and, and migrate up over time as you get more acclimated to an ice bath or even a cold river, lake, or stream. Do it safely. Don't jump in head first. Slowly walk in and get acclimated to that cold. Remember to breathe. Don't try to hold your breath. You can do this, my friends. There's elderly people in the Sea of Man over in Ireland who have been doing this. Centenarians have been doing this forever and they attribute this regular ocean swimming as part of their longevity repertoire as something that makes them both social as well as metabolically healthy. So hopefully you found some value from this video. Thanks for hitting that like button. I'll put resources in the links below and we'll catch you on a future one down the road.